Hello YouTube and welcome to tutorial number 51 in the Microsoft Visual Basic .NET program tutorials and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to use the HTTP web request post method to post data to an online form. So if you don't know what HTTP web request is, um, it basically allows you to act like a web browser but, but without using an actual web browser component. So that takes away all the bulky web browser loading and with the images and any other objects in a web browser, in a web page, it just allows you to create a more professional application without a web browser. But you'll still have like web browser, like functionality, It'd be able to like do stuff like post the forms and stuff. And um, yeah, I'll just show you what it is now. So basically, people use it in like bots, so like YouTube bots and stuff. People might use it in. I haven't. Well, basically, I'm just the laziest person ever. So when I make bots, I just use web browsers. But you know, if you want to be uh, like professional and and stuff, then um, this is what you're going to need to use. Okay, so um, what we're going to need to do in this tutorial is we're going to need to be able to track the HTTP post headers from where we log in. So to do that, we're going to need to download an application called Live HTTP Headers. Now you can either Google Live HTTP Headers. Or just go to live hcb headers dot mozdev dot org forward slash installation dot html, um, or you can just go to the main site which is here, and then click on installation. So what you need to do is download the latest version, and I think it's add-on for Firefox. I'm not sure, but just download it, and then um, you'll have to restart Firefox, and it'll be in Tools and Live HTTP headers. Okay, so um, once you have that, we're ready to start. So, uh, go to here. Let me just check what. Yeah, it's this is going to be a long tutorial, so it might have to be in two parts. But um, you know, just bear with me. It is some useful information. So um, go ahead and create a new project and call it Post to Zybez Forum, and that's the forum we're going to post to. Um, I don't think I've told you yet, but what you need to do is go to forums.zybez.net or Google RuneScape Community, which is this forum. And what you need to do is click register and register an account. Now I've registered one called Teach Me Computer with the password as password. If you want to be sad enough to hack that, then go on. You can if you want, but I don't use it. I just, I just made it for this tutorial. And um, yeah, I'm going to use that, and you need your own account, so make sure you register and write down your credentials. Okay, so once we have this form loaded up, we're going to need to add a few objects. The first thing we're going to need to do is add a label, and put that text as username, because we're going to need two text boxes for the username and password. So add that one username, a new label, password. Then we need to add two text boxes for username and password, so one, two. I'll try and put them nice and neat. I'm not a very good person when it comes to creating um, interfaces and stuff. I'm actually not very creative, creative at all, but whatever. Um, so create that, and then we're going to need a button here. And this is what's going to start or make the request. So change the text to make request, and then we're going to need a rich text box. This is going to store the web response that we get from making the request, the HTML code that we get. So um, add that, and that will be all we need to create the request. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this code and show it in a web browser to show you the actual response that we got. Now you might think that is utterly pointless, why would we do that if we still need a web browser? Well, we don't need a web browser, I'm just showing you the code that you will get as a response. So don't think that, you know, um, uh, you need a web browser, you don't. This is just to show you the response. You can quite, if you just want to read the whole source code yourself, you would bit sad, but you can do that if you want, like, but yeah, whatever. So add the web browser and then add one last button and change this to C code or whatever. This is you're gonna put this code into this web browser. Okay, so now that we've added all the 
objects, we've got username, password label, it's Xbox One, it's Xbox Two for username and password. Then we have button one and rich text box. Button one is going to make the request. Rich text rich text box one is going to display this the response that we get. And then we have button two, which is going to take this code and put it to the document text of this web browser. Okay, so double click and make request and we can start. Now for this tutorial, um, we're going to need to use three imports. Now if you don't know what imports are, then I'm sorry, I probably should have taught you it earlier. But um, I won't tell you it now because I don't want to, the tutorial is going to be long enough as it is. But basically, just to put it quite simply, it makes you, it lets you type things um, with shortcuts. It doesn't like you and it just shortens down the amount of text we have to type basically. And there is a lot of text in this tutorial. So, um, just put imports system.net imports system.text imports I'll create a video um, later on imports probably after this one but you know for now just put them you don't really need to know what they mean okay so after that we're going to need to declare a cookie container and this is going to hold our cookie that says we've logged in um, so declare login cookie as cookie container and now we're ready to start um, creating the request. So the first thing we need to do is declare the data that we're going to post to the web server, which will be our username and password and some other things that you might not think of, but we'll find what they are now. So what you need to do is make a new um, variable called post data and oops as string. And what the value of this is going to be the data that we track of the HTTP headers is going to be the content. So what we need to do is use our tool right here, live HTTP headers. Just go to tools on Firefox and live HTTP headers. And you don't need to do anything, just make sure the capture is checked and this is open. And all you need to do is log in. So I'll teach you user. <coughs> Password. Oops. And it has successfully logged in. So now we go back to live HTTP headers, and you'll see a lot of junk. Don't you don't really need to know what this is. Just go right up to the top for the first um, request that we made, which is the post quest to log in, and you'll see it's a post quest because it says here post. And what we need is if you go down here to content length 154, the content length will be different for you. But um, right underneath this, you'll see referrer, zybez.net, whatever. Um, and all this stuff. Now, this might look a bit confusing to you, but this is just think of each of these as variables. So we have refer to equals and this link here, and then and username equals teach me computer, and password equals password, and remember me equals one. So what this basically is, you can think of each of these as a variable. The referrer is what what I was referred from, the web page I was referred from, and then the equal sign is giving it the value of that. And then it has an ampersand, which is also what we use to join variables together in vb.net. And then it has username, the variable username, equals, and then the value here, TV computer. And then the ampersand, password, equals password. Now what we need to do is right-click that and copy. And then open up Visual Basic and paste that there. And as uh, I've just explained it briefly, but as I said, like it has the value of each of the things. Um, what you can do is, where it says like ampersand username equals TG computer, it'll be different for you. Put two brackets to delete, we'll delete the name first and then put two brackets to separate it. And then put an ampersand or a plus sign, it depends what you prefer. And then put text box one dot text, and then another one. And this is going to allow you to customize it, so you can have and username equals and then the text box one dot text and then ampersand password equals and then we'll delete this where it says password or whatever your password is two brackets ampersand text box two dot text ampersand so um you know what this is doing um this is declaring the post data that we're going to post to the, the web server and we've customized it for username and password and also let me just say before I forget if you're using a space, you need to use a plus sign instead of a space. Um, it just It's just because that's the way it recognizes it, as a plus sign and not a space. Um, yeah, basically that's all. I'm not using a 
any spaces so you know it wouldn't appear in mine but that's what you need to do okay so now that we've declared the post data after this we need to declare temp cookies as new cookie oops, con container and this is just declared in a temp cookie container and what we're going to do at the end of this is add it to the login cookie the main cookie container and I'll show you why later in the next tutorial and um, because I'm going to show you how to like use the same cookie to like navigate around the website but yeah well that's for a third tutorial but after that what we need to do is declare encoding as new UTF-8 oops, 8 encoding and the reason we have to do this is because we have to convert this string to bytes and UTF-8 encoding is the standard encoding for Unicode text in HTML documents so um, you don't really need to know that just you need to know that declare encoding as UTF-8 encoding and now what we need to do is we need to convert this string to bytes because we need to declare it um, to bytes because um, b that's how the web server recognizes it we can't just simply post a visual basic string we have to um, convert it to bytes so declare byte data as byte equals encoding dot get bytes and in brackets post data which is the variable we declared here so what this is doing is we declare byte data variable as byte equals encoding dot get bytes post data so we're using this UTF-8 encoding to get the bytes of this that's basically all we're doing there okay now what we can do is create the actual HTTP web request so what we need to do is declare post request as HTTP web request Oops. equals direct cast and in brackets web request dot create and in brackets um, just put two brackets there for now and then put a comma and HTTP web request sorry about um, I'm quite tired right now that's why I'm spelling stuff wrong um, so basically we what we do we declare a new HTTP web request here and we're creating the request with this page which we don't have yet and that's the same as HTTP web request so um, to get this page that we make the request with we go back to this to the live HTTP headers and you'll see right at the top the very first line it has a link now what you do is right click and copy that and then just paste this into here and yeah that's all we need to do there and then yeah and we'll also need this link again later we'll just because we're going to use this also for the referrer and I'll set I'll tell you what that is next okay so now that we have post rec as a HTTP request we're going to set post rec dot method to post and that's pretty self explanatory we're setting the method of the HTTP request to post because we're posting data and then after that we're going to say post rec dot keep alive equals true and a keep alive just makes sure that the connection doesn't time out it just makes sure like it doesn't like if there wasn't a response for like 60 seconds it wouldn't time out um, you know because you might have slow internet or something um, I don't know and then next we need to set post rec dot cookie container um oh, oh, post rec dot cookie con container to temp cookies which we've declared up here and that's just setting the cookie container of this session if you want to call it or web quest to temp cookies <coughs> and after we're going to add these cookies to the main global login cookie okay now we need to declare some other things